Hey, let's talk about these bad boys. The world's first portable wireless low latency studio monitors. Are they good enough for mixing or are they designed more for music production? I'm gonna answer all of these questions and on top of that, show you how you can connect them and work with them in Cubase and any other DAW. So the Unit 4 studio monitors are made by III. I don't know if you remember III, but I made a video on these headphones. They are the TMA Wireless Plus headphones that I actually still work with when producing music, very useful. So they came up with the same concept as the headphones, but for studio monitors, which is quite interesting. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid to make this video. I'm gonna be transparent with you. III sent me these speakers, but all opinions shared in this video are mine. So let's start by looking at what we get with the Unit 4. Uh, first of all, uh, we have the speakers <laughs> themselves when we open the box, and there's also the transmitter for low latency transmission. And later in this video, I'm gonna test this out uh, straight from Cubase, so stay tuned. When I say that they are portable is that they have rechargeable batteries on each of them and you can use the included power adapter to charge them up or just to leave them connected if you wish to. Now batteries are quite performance. You can get up to 20 hours of playback time. It's gonna take you maybe a couple of hours for a full recharge. There's also two protective pouches for the speakers included in the box. Now they are very well designed, I have to say. You know, the base port at the back of the speaker can also be used as a handle just to carry them with you you know which is quite nice you know there are not very heavy also and there's also a magnetic grill that you can install on the top of the speakers that will protect uh, the woofer and the tweeter now at this moment i don't have that grill with me but it's now included in the box and the cool thing is that there's a phone app included that you can use to tweak the EQ part of the speakers straight from your phone, which is also very useful. Uh, you can also adjust the, let me check here. You know, there's the light ring that we have, which is nice. I can adjust the brightness of that light if I wish to. So I don't know if you can see the difference, but there it is. So you can connect them using the transmitter, which is gonna be Wi-Fi for low latency. Uh, transmission and there's also a Bluetooth option uh, which can be good for playback but not the ideal for uh, music production. I'm gonna explain to you why uh, later. So there's some switches at the back uh, to switch between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and also to select the left or right position of each speaker. And you can connect them directly without using the transmitter or Bluetooth straight uh, with a balance quarter inch input or a mini jack connector. Now I'm in my dining room with the uh, Unit 4 speakers, my laptop, a, a MIDI controller and Cubase. Now there's a couple of ways I can uh, set up uh, the placement of my speakers. Uh, I can just uh, put them standing up vertically, or I can just put them on the side, which is gonna give me a slight angle. And I think this is the setup that I'm gonna use, which works perfectly when working on my laptop straight on the table. Now, one of the ways I can use uh, the Unit 4 speakers with Cubase or any other DAW is to connect the Wi-Fi transmitter straight on my computer. It has a USB-C connector, and there you go. Uh, now, this way, I'm using the transmitter as a playback audio interface. So in Cubase, I'm gonna have to go straight under Studio, down to Studio Setup. Under Audio System, I'm gonna select the driver and look for the IIXO2W Plus link transmitter. So that's the driver that will play the sound out of Cubase straight into the speakers. Okay, now I have my controller connected and a drum module loaded. Okay, that's cool because there's a 16 milliseconds of latency using the Wi-Fi transmitter, which is very fast compared to Bluetooth. If I was using Bluetooth instead of that transmitter, the latency would be like way higher. I don't know the exact latency time I would have with Bluetooth, but trust me, doing this would be unworkable. It wouldn't work, you know? 
especially when playing on a MIDI controller with a drum module. The minute you have too much latency, you will notice right away. But now, at 16 milliseconds, using the transmitter, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, let me record something here and we'll see how that's gonna go. Cool, that works pretty well, it feels good. Um, so 16 milliseconds of latency for this kind of work does the job pretty well. Something I also wanna mention is that there's a hole mount underneath the speaker if you wanna just put them on speaker stands, okay? So that is gonna work. Now there's two other ways I can connect the Unit 4 speakers using a DAW or Cubase, is to use my sound interface. So if you don't wanna use the uh, transmitter as a playback audio interface, you can use your regular uh, sound interface and connect the transmitter straight from the headphone output. And in this case, I would have to use uh, a uh, mini jack cable straight into the mini jack uh, connector on the transmitter. Connect this to my headphone output of my interface. And that's it, that will work. The only thing is that that transmitter, again, has no battery inside. I would have to connect the transmitter to a power source like an external battery. So that would work in this case. And, uh, and there you go. Now it's connected, we can see the lights on the transmitter by using an external battery. But on my side, what I would do is to completely forget about the transmitter in this case and just use regular quarter inch cables, connect them to the outputs of my interface and connect them straight into the speakers, you know. Now it might not be 100% wireless at this point. However, I'm still using the battery out of the, uh, the speakers, so the speakers are still portable without having to connect them to a power source. Something I wanna mention is the audio quality coming out of the transmitter is 44.1 kilohertz and 16 bit. If you use Bluetooth, it's not gonna be the same audio quality. Now, on the website, it says here that uh, the design is future-proof, which is nice. So that means that if you need to replace a part, so let's say you need to replace the drivers, the tweeters, you can do so in pretty much an easy way and especially the battery now the battery will last for a long time but let's say you need to replace the batteries you can order some and replace them yourself and as far as i can tell it looks pretty easy so it's a glue free design where you only need a couple of screwdrivers and you're good to go okay so now they're cool to work with when it comes to music production what about mixing with them? Now I took the time to try them out, mix with them more than once. I placed them right beside my main studio monitors on the same speaker stands. And I'm gonna have to say that I was quite surprised on the audio quality of these speakers, especially with the size of the speakers. So we have a four inch woofer and a tweeter. So it's a two way system. The crossover is at 3K. So everything below 3K is managed by the four inch woofer and everything above 3K by the tweeter. Now I was expecting the speakers to sound a bit more on the thin side since we have a four inch speaker. So I was expecting kind of a lack in bass frequencies, but I was actually wrong. And to be honest with you, they do sound pretty neutral across the board to the exception of sub frequencies and the top end that lacks a bit of definition. But as far as bass frequencies goes, the bass response is nice and defined and not overwhelming. Okay, so it's well balanced with the rest of the frequency range. And there's lots of punch when it comes to bass frequencies. Like I said, they do lack of sub frequencies, which is normal uh, due to the size of the woofer. Mid range sounds pretty nice, balanced, flat. And I kind of like that because the mid range is quite important when mixing. And when it comes to high frequencies, they sound good, but the top end lacks of definition. The way I use them in the studio, uh, very simple. They are right beside my main studio monitors and I uh, connect them through my uh, monitor controller using TRS cables connected straight at the back of the speakers. 
that simple. So I don't use the Wi-Fi transmitter and I also don't use the power adapters. I just use them with the battery power. With 20 hours of battery life, I'm more than good. And when I bring them with me out of the studio, this is where I'm gonna use the Wi-Fi transmitter. So the big question is, are they good enough to mix with? You know, with the good neutral sound quality they have, I'm gonna say, yes, they are. For the size of these speakers, they do sound very good and good enough to mix with. Pros and cons, and who are they made for? Let's start with the pros. Very good build, good neutral sound quality, and the audio quality going through the transmitter is also top notch. The wireless technology behind these speakers is very well done. So it is a good product that is very well designed. The 20 hour battery life is great. The fact that they are future proof is also a big plus. Now, if we look at the price for these studio monitors, we're looking at $800 US, which is not cheap. So depending on your needs, that can be a con. So they are not made for everyone. And they also don't have a travel case included. You can buy a travel case, but it's gonna cost you an extra $70 US. And to be honest with you, for a pair of speakers uh, that are designed to be traveling speakers, let's face it, they are wireless. They are not made to stay in the same location all the time. It would have been cool to have the travel case included at that price and not only a couple of pouches. They are portable wireless studio monitors after all. I decided to make this video, first of all, because I love III and the type of products they make, especially the TMA Wireless Plus headphones that I use every time I produce music. When I produce music in my studio, I love to work with headphones for the majority of the time. And these wireless headphones does an amazing job. So I've been working with these on a regular basis for the past two years. So I was curious about getting that type of wireless technology on studio monitors. And so that's why I decided to make this video. But is this type of technology useful for the home studio? Who are they made for? Now, these are mainly made for people who travels a lot, you know, like a music producer who loves to do some on-site work with clients or friends, or a DJ, for example, that needs a portable uh, monitoring system without having to carry a bunch of cables and power adapters, or just for someone who loves technology, loves this type of wireless approach on studio monitors, and would like to have a second pair of studio monitors to carry around once in a while. That could be a good option. Like I said, for studio monitors, it's a first of its kind. I don't think there's another company right now at this point in time that are offering this type of product for music producers. But we'll see if other companies will follow this route in the near future. So again, it's a good product, but not useful for everyone. But if you're looking to buy your first set of studio monitors and you're always gonna work in your home studio without moving around, there's other options out there for this type of price range. Now, what about you? Do you think a pair of wireless studio monitors can be useful for your needs? Do you like this type of technology for the home studio? Let me know down below. Don't forget forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.